Look, Atlas is a company known for many things. Making stupid business decisions, treats fans like garbage, re-release a game with a few extra hours of content and a new girl. But most importantly, if a game of theirs is successful, you bet they will do everything in their power to milk it dry. God, I wish that were me. Yeah, at this point, that is not a surprise anymore. You have probably seen the memes about Atlas are going to make a world where Persona 5 lasts forever. And yeah, that's a fact. From re-releases, millions of spin-off titles, and even crossovers with other franchises. It's no secret to anyone how hard Persona 4 and 5 have been milked left and right. So that begs the question. What about Persona 3? I mean, it's still considered part of the mainstream game, so why hasn't it been exploited as hard as the other two? Well, believe it or not, Atlas did try to milk this game as much as possible. And I'm not talking about the obvious examples like the Persona Q games where you can use Seas, or Persona 4 Arena where the grown-up cast of 3 is playable. I want to talk about games that are solely focused on exploiting Persona 3 as much as possible. And there's a good chance you won't know a grand majority of these titles. On one hand, because they're inaccessible nowadays. On the other, because most of us aren't even Japanese. Without further ado, here we have the Strange Persona 3 spin-offs. Following up on what I said earlier, the grand majority of these games released only in Japan, and to make matters worse, most of them released on mobile phones. But I'm not talking about the smartphones we are so used to nowadays, no 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 no. I'm talking about the old phones from the 2000s. So starting off we have Aegis, the first mission. Not Aegis, but Aegis. This is a game in which the player uses the phone's directional path to control Aegis. With small platforming elements, you can use different weapons to fight shadows. You have access to guns, grenade launchers, and drills to take them out in different ways. Shame there's no giant fist weapon though, but you still get access to Palladium, which has different abilities to help you in battle. On the surface, this might look like a typical phone game with simple combat and super basic RPG elements. And to be fair, that's exactly what it is. However, the most surprising thing about this game is that it has a fully developed story. As the name implies, this game takes place 10 years before the events of Persona 3, and focuses on the creation of Aegis, how she, despite being a machine, was able to develop human emotions. You get a new set of characters, and even some familiar faces, such as a younger Mitsuru and even Neichiro Takeba, Yukari's father. And honestly, that is a great concept! A small spin-off that gives more context to what we already know, while also adding more to a beloved character? That's awesome! Too bad that by the end of it, Aegis's memories get erased. But hey, if you play Persona spin-offs, you should be used to that at this point. So yeah, it's a shame that they decided to leave something like this in old Japanese phones. I can see this having more potential in a portable console from back in the day, like the PSP. But it is what it is. The thing about these Japanese Persona 3 spin-offs is that finding information about them is already hard, but finding footage about them is borderline impossible, and these next ones are proof of that. Persona 3 The Night Before and Persona Ainsoft, free web browser games once again exclusive to Japanese markets, and I'm just gonna say, the former's title is not lying. Persona 3 The Night Before is an original story that takes place the night before the events of Persona 3. All that is known about this game is that players will try to explore Tartarus and fight their way through shadows to reach the top of the tower. And to make it more accurate to the lore of the game, players will only be able to play one hour per day, based on a timer that will refresh the next day. The other interesting part about this game is that your starter persona is determined by a personality quiz, kinda like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. With your options being Eligor, Angel, Inugami and Pixie. This game ran from June 1st, 2006 all the way to February 25th, 2008. And one day after its closure, Atlas released Persona Ain't Sop. While this game isn't completely based on Persona 3, it still borrows so many elements from its predecessor while expanding on some mechanics. So instead of taking place in Tatsumi Port Island, players are taken to a nightmare world called Clyphon. Where have I heard that name before? Man. Probably relevant. 
and just like the previous game, there's barely any footage about it online. Only proof a friend of mine could find about its existence were a few screenshots and people talking about it in old forums from 16 years ago. That's pretty crazy, actually. Next up, we have Persona 3 Escape, a game that takes place during the events of the main game. Remember how Persona Q takes place during the typhoon that ruins the school festival? This is kinda the same thing, as the entire plot happens during the Love Hotel section of Persona 3. In this point-and-click adventure, players must help Makoto and Yukari escape a room in the Love Hotel by solving puzzles. These puzzles basically boil down to using the right persona at the right time, and as you overcome more obstacles, you unlock more persona. It's super short, apparently, with the only playthrough available online lasting about 30 minutes. And from what can be seen, it really doesn't matter in the slightest to the overall plot. Just an excuse for Atlas to milk Persona 3. You know what sucks? When you see a game with a very cool name and it ends up being the laziest product you have seen in your life. And the worst part is, somehow, it's impossible to find footage about it. Here we have Persona 3 Broken Shadow. Don't let that cool name fool you, because this game is literally Breakout. And you guys know Breakout, right? Very fun arcade game, I like it a lot. And this one is literally just that, but with a Persona 3 cut of paint. I will say though, seeing the shadows replace the blocks is very fun, and apparently you could use certain Persona as power-ups, and by clearing stages you could also unlock wallpapers for your phone, that's very cute actually. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change the fact that a cool name like Persona 3 Broken Shadow was wasted on a game that doesn't even exist anymore. Persona 3 EM This game is so strange, because just like Gigi's the first mission, it seemed to be one of the most complete games out there. But unlike that one, there's not a single video that shows its existence, only images. And just like Escape, this game takes place within the events of Persona 3. All that we know about it is that during the trip to Yakushima, Seas finds themselves stuck in a period of time called the Nightmare Hour, which is not the same thing as the Dark Hour from the main story. And just like that time, they must explore a Tartarus-like dungeon called Oneiros to find and defeat their own Arc Persona, which are the embodiment of a side of them that is difficult to accept. In a way, you can see them as precursors to the shadows from Persona 4. Surprisingly, despite being an old game for phones, it's very deep and it retains many gameplay elements from the original game, such as stats, items, skills, AI, and combat system remaining very loyal to the source material, with Oneiros itself having 80 floors to explore. And this is only during the night, because during the day, you also have the daily life sim Persona is known for being able to partake in random activities and even do social links with other CIS members. Just let that sink in. A phone game gave social links to Junpei and Akihiko even before Portable released. It's so crazy because, as I said earlier, there's a lot of information about the game online, but barely any footage about it. It's very interesting, considering how deep it was despite its limitations. It almost makes it feel like a fake title. You know, like when people talk about Persona 3 Duel, the supposedly Nintendo DS port of the game? Yeah, kinda like that. Persona 3 Social, the first game in this video developed for smartphones. So why the hell is there barely any information about it? Well, it's probably because, again, it released solely in Japan. All that is known about it is that in this century you take the role of a Gekukan student and you must take quests and battle shadows with the help of your persona while playing online with other people. There's no information beyond that. All that we can imply is that the concept was a bit similar to the night before and ain't soft. Nothing more than that. Persona 3 e Lost Puzzle now, this is a game that I will no doubt adore to play, do you wanna know why? Because it's literally just Picross, yeah! I've mentioned a few times how much I adore those games, and looking at what little images there are out there... Yep, nope, that's definitely Picross if I've ever seen one. And you mean to tell me it's about one of my favorite RPGs of all time? Mmm, <clears throat> I wish this thing was still accessible nowadays. By the way, I just think it's funny that I found more information about this game on the Picross wiki instead of the Megami Tensei wiki. Megami Tensei Kicks Persona 3 
Just like the name implies, this is literally cakes with Persona 3 images and music. A lazy reskin, but hey, cakes is still a really fun puzzle game and very easy to understand too. It's all about drawing lines to fill images while avoiding enemies. I remember back in the 2000s I would grab my mom's old flip phone because she had a version of the game in there. Then she would hit me with la chancla for grabbing it without her permission. Very fun game, I like it. And at the end of the mobile games we have Megami Tensei Chaining Soul Persona 3. Not to be confused with Persona Trinity Soul. You know, the one who has this song? Check it out, I'm in the house like carpet. And if there's too many heads in my blunt, I won't spark it, I'll put it in my pocket and save it like rocket. Another easy to understand game, as it is once again a reskin of another puzzle game, Bujewel, where the objective is to make gems explode by lining them up and then make chains. And you can also fill up unique gauges that can unleash special persona powers. Again, not the worst thing out there, just another reskin that exists if you wanted more Persona 3 in your phone. Alright, it's time we move on to the very, very last game. When you hear Persona 3, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it the dreadful atmosphere? The complex characters? Or maybe the strong themes about mortality? Well, someone at Atlas looked at all of this and said, man, this is deep. But you know what else this game needs? Why a dancing spin-off, of course! Here we have Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, a sequel to Persona 4 Dancing All Night that released alongside Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. God, remember when you had to buy both games at the same time to get access to Persona 4 Dancing on the PS4? That was so scummy! But just as I said at the beginning of the video, Atlas is well known for making stupid decisions. And I mean, what can I say about it? It's a fine enough spin-off. Not terrible, but not impressive. As a rhythm game, the gameplay is self-explanatory. Just press the buttons at the right time and then get a stroke whenever you miss your combo. Instead, why don't I tell you what I like and dislike about the game? First of all, the one thing that caught my attention ever since the first trailer released is how gorgeous this game looks. I was genuinely astonished at the presentation, especially at the character models. I like the dancing redesigns, sure, but take in mind, at the time, these were the prettiest models of seas we've ever had, and seeing them in action and interact with one another was nothing but pure bliss to me. It genuinely made me hope that one day we could get a Persona 3 remake that looked just as amazing as Dancing in Moonlight. And five years later, that's exactly what we got! Yes! Sorry guys, it's just, I'm so, so tired. So tired of winning all the time! <laughs> the music of this game is awesome. Persona 4 and 5 have amazing soundtracks, sure, but 3's will forever hold a special place in my heart. And this game did it a lot of justice. There are so many amazing remixes that I like. Burn My Dread as Mitsuru goes extremely hard. When the moon reaches for the stars as Yukari is amazing. A deep mentality with Junpei made me appreciate a song I completely forgot about. Why did I make him dance on the place where his girlfriend dies? I don't know, but the song slaps. Oh, and memories of you with the female cis members? Mmm, <clears throat> so good! There's literally only two songs in the game that I hate. The Mass Destruction Remix. That one is so terrible, it's literally just random noise disguised behind Lotus Juice's lyrics. I feel that they made it that way, just to have an extremely difficult song for no reason at all. And the end result sucks so badly. If you make me hate Mass Destruction, one of my favorite battle songs of all time, you failed hard. The other remix I really hate here is Deep Breath Deep Breath. It's so damn boring, so repetitive, and it sounds nothing like the original song. A shame, because I actually really like Deep Breath Deep Breath. So, yeah. That's what I like about Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight. Amazing presentation, great music, for the most part, and it's a rhythm game, so it's pretty fun to play. Oh, yeah, and the customization adds some replayability. However, is this something that was worth the full retail price back when it released in 2018? Did you eat a tree for her? Even as a huge Persona 3 fanboy, the only reason I got this game is because I got it at a huge discount. And even then, while playing it, I couldn't help but notice the cut corners and just how lacking it felt at times. The music selection is great, the visuals are stunning, 
but sometimes it's obvious that they just had to pay something really fast. And it's because of that that sometimes you get songs that are literally cutscenes and credit scenes from the original game. And okay, if it was like one or two songs, that would be fine. But no, it's 5 out of 25 songs in the base game. And it gets worse. There's 35 DLC songs, and 30 of them are the exact same thing. Just cutscenes from other games, anime, and even live concerts. Only 5 of them are fully animated with 3D models. And can someone care to explain to me why one of the DLC songs is Goro Akechi in Persona 3? Yeah, I know the DLC is cross-playable with Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight, but this is so weird to look at. And don't think for a second any of this comes cheap. This is Atlas we're talking about. Persona 3 Dancing is also a very boring game, story-wise. Mostly because there's barely any story in the first place. And right from the get-go they tell you, nah, don't worry, you'll forget everything after this is all over. I understand why they couldn't do something like Persona 4 Dancing, but there's really nothing of substance here. You get some conversations between the CIS members, but it's like, eh, whatever. It's just fan service for the sake of being fan service. It's cool to see the characters interact, but not a single conversation never stuck with me. Actually, there is one thing I do remember. How hard they flanderized Akihiko here! I've already heard comments to how bad he is in the Q games, but here it was borderline obnoxious how he had to bring out protein and muscles to every single conversation. Not the best era for this character. Now, this is more of a personal nitpick from me, but can I say that I am a bit sour about the absence of some characters? Mainly Goromaru and Kotone. With Koromaru, it is explained that the reason he is not in the game is because dogs are not allowed in the Velvet Room. Oh, okay, so you mean to tell me the badass dog can come in, but the stupid idiot cat from Persona 5 is fine? I know there's only so much you can do to make a dog dance, but like, it would have been cool to see him participate at least as an assist during the dances, or just put him to dance with Ken, he's still a member of Seas. And same thing with Kotone, she is a protagonist too. It's like, Elizabeth can distort space and time to have a dancing competition in 2009 with her sisters, but apparently FMC is off limits? Even with whatever arbitrary rules they make, the DLC was always an option. It is implied that this game takes place after October 4th, but that didn't stop Atlas from bringing Shinji back from the grave as DLC. You got the guy from Persona 4 Arena dancing with Makoto, hell, even Theodore! Theodore is in the game, what the hell? Is Atlas allergic to Kotone or what's up? It's even more jarring because they actually made remixes of the fancy route and they're easily, easily the best tracks in the whole game. Wiping All Out, Way of Life, Time, they knocked it out of the park with these tracks. It's just, you know, it feels weird to not have Kotone be present on them. So yeah, in the end, Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight isn't the worst spin-off out there. It has very good qualities, it's just not a must play right away. If you manage to get it at a big discount, just like I did, I don't see the harm in giving it a shot. And if you don't care about it, you can always listen to the soundtrack online. There's really good music in there. Now, the question is, since Persona 3 Reload was a huge success, does that mean that Atlus will try to milk the hell out of it once again? I wouldn't be surprised if it happens, but hey, if I am honest, fine by me. If I am forced to have a Persona game showing my face every 5 seconds, at least let it be the one that I actually really like. But I guess we just have to wait and see. But anyway, what did you think? Did you know about any of these games beforehand? Which one would you like to play? Please let me know in the comments and while you're at it, thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you could support the channel, you know, you can do so by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, or Patreon. It will mean so much to me. Have a wonderful day, and take care! I'll see you next time!